What was the most amount of money that you ever made in a single year? I'm not going to tell you that. Okay. 600000 Yeah. Yeah. $650,000. I am VP of marketing at a software company. Oh, I don't want to disclose my personal income. <laughs> so I'm an entrepreneur, and, you know, we spend money, we make money. 600000 We're going all around downtown Austin asking strangers the most amount of money that they've ever made in a single year. Stay tuned. Excuse me, sir. Yeah. Question for you. Yeah. My brother and my friend and I, we started a channel at the University of Texas that you've got a 1.4 million followers, just asking people a few questions on the best piece of advice that they could tell the younger generation of kids coming out of school, starting out in the real world. Saw you want to go, want to do a quick interview with us, just ask you a few questions oh, on some, yeah, of, some yeah. of your advice. What was the most amount of money that you ever made in a single year? So I'm an entrepreneur and you know, we spend money, we make money. 600,000. In what industry did you ultimately pursue a career in? Neurotechnology. I'm in the business of getting people off psychiatric medication and using frequencies and digital frequency patterns to restore mental health or what we call just general health so that life on life's terms is a pleasure rather than a struggle. So if you were to go back to when you started your first business, what is the number one thing that you would tell yourself? Be careful financially. Don't borrow money. And if you do borrow money, be very, very careful. The biggest mistake I ever made was letting banks lend me money. Always fund it yourself as best you can. Friends and family, raise the money through all the platforms that are available now. But don't borrow the money from the banks because you will regret it. What has been your secret to scaling your business throughout your career? So I actually tell my team, because I actually am in C CEO of a public company and I run my own business. And I tell everybody, you have your vertical managers, they sit on top and they bark and they give orders. And then you have your horizontal managers where we all sit at the table and we work together. And only in a critical moment do I basically pull rank and, and make a final decision. So the most important part of running a business, scaling a business is surround yourself with a team of professionals or aspiring professionals or like-minded individuals in the vision and come together and share that vision and listen. We don't listen listen to people anymore. We're, we're ready for a fight. We're ready to get in the corner and go after it. And you, we should never bring that into a business. What company are you, are you the CEO of right now? Nexelin Technology. We, we trade on NASDAQ. We stimulate the brain with frequencies that have been shown through science and through FDA approvals to normalize issues in the brain normally associated with mood disorders, mental health struggles. Thank you so much for your time. Hey, I really man, appreciate that. Good for you Thank guys. Thank you so much, hey. sir. sir. Question for you. We started the channel that we grew to 1.4 million followers. Just asking people a few quick questions on the advice they would tell the younger generation. Actually, I'm just um, I'm late meeting somebody. No worries, Sorry about no worries. that. Have a good night. Okay, we're in the mall. We'll go get this next one. Come on. So I think something that's super funny about Hard Dogs so that not many people see is we go for interviews everywhere. It doesn't matter if you're at the ice cream shop at 9 o'clock at night. You could be at the convenience store. It's, it's everywhere. I mean, we're going to be in line getting some ice cream. We're getting some food. and. Come here, guy decked out in a suit, Rolex on. You just hear James, the, the, the famous words from James. Excuse me, sir. What's the best piece of advice you tell your younger self? You can't go anywhere without us. You yeah. can't go anywhere. You can't go anywhere. We're always filming. We're always shooting our shot. What industry did you ultimately pursue a career in? I am VP of marketing at a software company. How can someone really break into the tech industry in today's world? Take on as many opportunities as you can. So when I started, I started a lot of different startups. I had opportunities with large companies. I found my a lot of my colleagues were kind of pigeonholed into one specific role. By staying in startups, I got to touch a lot of different areas. I did have a lot of one to two year runs at smaller companies but I learned so much it let me grow um, faster than I think I would have if I just took a really comfortable high-paying job at the beginning and what was the most amount of money that you ever made in a single year oh I don't want to disclose my personal income <laughs> it's up to you, it's up to you. I mean high six figures really high six figures yeah. yeah what do you think is more important what you know or who you know who you know 100% how have you been able to connect build those relationships first and foremost you have to have really healthy relationships in the role that you're in because those ultimately will get you additional roles later on and always just remember that you are a brand so if you're just out having a good time you don't know who you're going to meet. And those could turn into really great opportunities. And I hate to admit this, but I've ended up with more business contacts than dates through online dating. So I just, you never know. Wow. So we always ask people, is it who you know or what you know? What's, what's your take on that? Here's my best networking advice for anyone out there. And this is someone that I preach. I think who you know is very important, right? You get your foot in the door. You surround yourself with millionaires and billionaires, people that are 10 steps ahead of you. But once you're in those circles, you have to find a way to provide value for them. So that way you can stay in contact with those people, that you can stay establishing and continuing those relationships. If you don't bring anything to the table and you don't have any skill sets or anything to offer that person, you can't connect them with other people, then you're just a fucking waste man. I think he nails it right on the head. It's a perfect mix of both, but if you can't provide value, why do they want to connect you with other people and why do they want to connect with you? What industry did you ultimately pursue a career in? I've been in medical for 26 years. I own my own business. Yeah. And what was the most amount of money that you ever made in a single year? I'm not going to tell you that. Okay. My last a question. A lot? Yeah. Working for yourself, it's not for everybody. The biggest thing I would tell any 
kid that's in college. I've owned my own stem cell company for 17 years, got a kick-ass business doing over four million in revenue, and I was the guy that always took chances. If you're gonna sit there and wait and never take chances, Good luck. Yeah. When you graduate, nobody cares. Honestly, after the first year, the guy that immediately hires you, he doesn't care where you go to school. After that, it's you versus the rest of the world. I tell people that I train and hire. When you get out, I'm your competitor. I've done this for 27 years right. and I will eat your freaking lunch away. Yeah. Final thing, my old man died when I was 26 years old. He said a couple things to me, which I'll share them all. The number one thing was he said, I don't care if you sell paper clips or locomotives for a living, people buy from people they like. The other thing he said was, son, don't sweat the small stuff. Control the controllables. Don't sweat all the other bullshit in life. If you can't control it, don't worry about it. You have to really cherish those moments. What got cut was we ended up having like a 30 minute conversation with this guy about some of his best life and career advice for us and just really all about that. Like you gotta be a hammer at all times. It's like, he, sa it's like he said, the cream rises to the top. No fucking excuses. Anyways, he's hiring. So anybody young and hungry, hit us up. We'll give you his number. Yeah, watch this guy's videos. Does a great job. Meets everybody. Everybody you could ever possibly want to meet. Keep hustling, bro. Hey, the school of hard knocks, you already know, man. Let's go. What industry did you ultimately pursue a career in? I was in the military for a few years. Got out of the military, dove right into consulting and project management. But the whole time, I always had something on the side. I always had uh, some form of entrepreneurial mindset, no matter what I do. So when I was in the military, I'd buy a house, you know, at every duty station I was at. And you know, without even realizing, you know, I was becoming somewhat of an investor. You know, I'd buy a house at one military base. I had to change duty stations. And I'd buy another house and I'd rent it out. And I ended up doing that until I acquired several houses. And being that they were all on military bases, there's always someone there to rent it out. How many properties do you currently have under your portfolio? Right, right now. now I have four, but you know, I flipped houses in between and done things like that and I'm getting ready to offload all of them. Right now I'm, I'm kind of uh, cash poor, asset rich, and I want to flip that for the recession that's coming so that I can go all in on uh, certain things that are really going to five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten X in the next, yeah. you know, yeah. year or so. What was the most amount of money that you ever made in a single year? Somewhere between five and six hundred thousand yeah yeah that's incredible man thanks in your opinion right what is the blueprint to becoming a billionaire in today's world so in 60 seconds in 60 seconds i can't really say but what i would say is create if you want to be a millionaire create you can't just wake up and go with the flow or do whatever you normally do you have to have a plan live strategically part of that strategic plan should be to create create something create a youtube channel create a product find something that's broken and find a solution to fix it or recreate something that's already working well if you see someone doing something well try to recreate it and do it in your own format or your own way add your own spin and your own knowledge and twist to it find something that's broken and fix it find something that's working well and replicate it and be strategic about both what was the importance of taking risk at an early age like what kind of opportunities and doors that did that open up for you? I went to Texas A&M for construction science and I remember sitting in the classroom, you know, looking at everyone in the class and knowing like what was going to come after like the job. I've already been on an internship and kind of knew like what it would be like after that. I was sitting there in the classroom and I just thought to myself like I just got to jump. My business that I had already started didn't even hit any big strides yet or anything but I just thought to myself I can't work for someone. I can't be like in this environment where I'm like told what to do and just sit there and work for someone else. Yeah. And so I just kind of took the risk and jumped and my junk removal company turned into to a demolition company, to a land clearing company, and I'm only 28 and started it at 21. And I have two other businesses in addition to that. What has been the most amount of money that you ever made in a single year? Um, I would say about $650,000. Every every month it's different. Some months I'll make $75,000 and the next month I make 10. And right. you just, you never know. That's one of the things too is like this all the yeah. time. So you're 28 years old. Yeah. What has been your blueprint to becoming a millionaire in today's world? Leverage real estate and, and maybe get like a line of credit to even purchase it. Or if you can get your hands on like an asset like that, I think that's probably one of the most important things to do at an early age because it'll just keep on appreciating over time and it'll help you with your credit as you're paying that off. And then maybe you can get renters or whatever. And at least you have an asset regardless of whatever happens, you f your business fails, whatever. You have something. Even if you get your parents to help you get your first house, I think a piece of real estate is key. Second, I would say have a plan and think about like where you want to end up and just work back backwards from there. If I want to build pools and it takes all of these different mechanical, electrical, plumbing, gunite, shot creek, concrete, this, that, who does these things? Where are they at? How good are they? There's a lot of different pieces to the puzzle, but just starting at the end, working your way toward where you are, where you are now can help you build like a, a plan. What industry did you ultimately pursue a career well, in? Lucky I was in law enforcement. I was with the Los Angeles Police Department for about 30 years. And what was the most amount of money that you ever made in a single year? Well, I did celebrity weddings. So I think at one point I was in topping 300. Mm. So what is your best financial advice for the younger generation today that you wish someone told you when you were coming out of school? Invest. My 
training officer when I first came on advised me to not only just depend on the pension, but invest in diversity. I didn't have a say in it. He told me, you're going to take it and, and divert and have a pension in a divert, uh, we call it deferred comp program. So you have two little buckets that you can pull out when yeah. you get older. So an LAPD, a police officer, made over 300000 doing celebrity weddings in security. Kind of crazy that you can actually make that kind of money in law enforcement. Question for you. Yeah. Wanted to know if we could do a quick interview with you, ask you you know, a few questions on how you became successful and your advice for the younger generation. Sure. Appreciate that. Thank you. <laughs> I appreciate that. What industry did you ultimately pursue a career in? I have an electrical engineering degree, but I work in cybersecurity and privacy right now. And what has been the most amount of money that you ever made in a single year? 400000 yeah. What was the best financial decision you ever made throughout your lifetime? I don't know if I would call it financial decision, but the best decision in my lifetime was to major in engineering because, you know, even though you have an engineering degree, you can just do so many other things. You don't have to be an engineer. It just leads to a lot of different areas that you normally wouldn't have because it teaches you a lot about problem solving. Absolutely. Thank you so much for your time, yeah. sir. I appreciate that. I love your answers. Thank, Thank you, you very much. Sir. Be sure to like and subscribe and stay tuned for tons of amazing content to come. And click this video right here to watch us going all around Houston asking millionaires how they became successful.